Welcome to another Digital Anarchy tutorial. I'm Jim Tierney, President of Digital Anarchy. And in this tutorial, we're going to talk about how to create 3D text within Photoshop. And specifically, we're going to talk about a plugin called 3D Invigorator. And we're also going to talk about the new tool within Photoshop called Reposé, which is an interesting new 3D tool that you can access from the 3D menu right within Photoshop. But the first thing I'm going to do is talk about 3D Invigorator and show you a little bit about that. And so the first step is to create a new document. Now with Invigorator, you don't need to create the text in Photoshop. You just apply Invigorator to its own layer. And actually what I'm going to do is create a smart object out of this layer. So now that that's a smart object, I'm going to go up to the filter menu and I'm going to select Zaxworks 3D Invigorator. So it brings up the 3D Invigorator interface and I'm going to go to the object menu and say create 3D text. And then I'm just going to type in 3D and click OK. And that's going to give me my text in the preview window. And now I can rotate this around. I can move my camera around and see what that looks like in three dimensions. And now I can start bringing in materials and adding bevels. So the first thing I'm going to do is figure out what I want the extrusion to look like. Now if I set my bevel scale down to around zero, I can extrude the depth out, and that's just going to give me a standard extrusion. But the real power in Invigorator is the fact that you have all these cool bevel, bevels that you can play around with. So let's grab a bevel with a scoop. And what this is going to do is if I increase my bevel scale, you can see that this actually has a kind of a scoop running right down the middle of it. And what you really want from a 3D object, it's really about the materials that you apply to it and how you affect all the different 3D edges that are on that object. So the great thing about Invigorator is we can come up to our profile viewer here and see what that bevel looks like exactly. Now I'm gonna kinda of gloss over a lot of this stuff. This is not meant to be a thoroughly in-depth tutorial of 3D Invigorator. Right now I just kinda of wanna do a overview of it. So this is the profile viewer and it shows you what your bevel looks like. And with this tool selected here, we can split these faces up. And you can see that I can now apply different materials. All these little balls with ones in them indicate that they're using material one. And right now I haven't really done any, haven't really applied the material to it. And so I'm going to grab this gold texture and just drop it on there. And that's going to make my whole, all my text nice shiny gold and if you want to see what this looks like the final render we can click on render preview and it'll do a ray traced version of that while you're moving things around it's just sort of in this preview mode it gives you a very fast easy way of seeing what the object looks like and setting the scene up but when you really want to see what it's going to look like back in photoshop you can just click on render preview and it'll show you that and you can see that one of the really great things about Invigorator is just the super high quality rendering. It just creates really beautiful reflections, transparencies, which I'll show you in a second. It's just some really gorgeous stuff. So we're just going to actually leave that like that. And now I'm going to apply some different materials. So I'm going to come in and grab, let's say, a silver material for the front faces of that bevel. And we can click Render Preview to see what that looks like. Okay, so that's kind of cool. So now let's do something a little bit different. Let's grab my black wireframe here and add that as the middle texture, as the kind of the scoop texture. And if I render that out, now you can see that I've got this interesting wireframe pattern on the inside. And you can change this around. We can scroll down. You can see that there are literally hundreds of textures that come with 3D Invigorator. And you can see that we have a transparent texture here. So let's try adding that in. And this is going to kind of give us like a colorful plastic type of transparent look. And if I rotate around a little bit, you can see exactly what that looks like. And the ray tracer is just great about rendering these reflections, re rendering the transparency. It's really a powerful way of rendering out 3D objects. But I like that black wireframe. So I think we're going to go ahead and stick with that. Go back with that. See what that looks like. So I've got the gold on the front, the silver on the outside, 
and the black wireframe on the inside to create a really nice complex 3D object. And once you have the object looking the way you want, you can go over to the light editor and start playing around with the lights. We can start moving the lights around. You can see that we can have up to six different lights. In this case, we have three, so we'll grab light two and move that around. So you have a lot of flexibility in terms of how you set up the lights. You can set them different colors. You can adjust the intensity. You can rotate them around in sort of a very visual sort of way. So it's a very powerful way of using the lights, using the materials, and getting a 3D object that looks extremely professional and very, very cool. And of course, if you want a different bevel, you can just go to the bevel menu and select from, again, hundreds of different presets for the bevels. Lots of different looks. Sometimes they're interesting, but uh, you can see that just lots of different variations, all within 3D Invigorator and without having to really do all that much work. You basically type in the text or pull in an Illustrator object, set up the objects, apply a few materials to it, render it back out to Photoshop, and you're good to go. And one of the other interesting things about 3D Invigorator is let's go back to our original bevel with a scoop is that you can edit each object individually. So let's say we want to scale that this D down a little bit. We can go to our object mode, grab my pointer to tool and just select my D. Now I can select the scale tool and scale that down. I can rotate it around a little bit if I want to. And now I can select my three of the 3D. And let's say we don't want to have each character have the same texture. Let's just say in the case of the three, I want to have everything be wireframe. So I can grab my wireframe here and just start applying that to all the different edges, except maybe the back edges, and render that. And you can see this gives it sort of a techie 3D look while we have the uh, D as just kind of gold and reflective. So lots of flexibility in how you set up your 3D objects, lots of ways to add different materials, different bevels, and then once you're done with it, you just click OK and go back into Photoshop. And actually, let's turn off the layer behind it for the moment. And you can see what that looks like in Photoshop. Probably not the best thing. But that's the great thing about smart objects is now we can go back to our smart layer here, double click on 3D Invigorator, go and say, well, you know, the three, the wireframe on the three really didn't work out all that well. Let's just go ahead and add some of that gold texture back in. Add the silver back in on the bevel as we had it. And that gives us a pretty nice look and we can click OK. And that'll make the changes and render back out into Photoshop. So it's a really great way of creating th interesting, complex 3D text and logos as well. So now let's take a look at what Reposé can do. Let's turn off my 3D Invigorator la layer and we'll turn on the text that I have here. Now let's go up to our 3D menu and you can see that Reposé is grayed out. And why is that? Well, let's go over to the Photoshop Preferences and 3D. And you can see that the ray tracer is selected. For Reposé to work, OpenGL needs to be selected. And so from a workflow standpoint, it's not great that Reposé only works with OpenGL, but that's the case. And so we have it selected and we click OK. And now if we go to our 3D menu, you can see that Reposé is now active and we can select text layer. And that'll bring up the Reposé dialog box. You can see it's taken our text and now made it 3D and we can rotate around that just as we did in 3D Invigorator. Reposé does use the Photoshop 3D camera. So you can use your controls within Reposé, but also the regular 3D controls on the Photoshop toolbar. I really only think this is an advantage over 3D Invigorator if you're building a whole 3D scene within Photoshop. And if you're really building a whole 3D scene, you probably should be in a real 3D program. Photoshop has some neat 3D tools, but if you're trying to build a complete scene, you're going to be better off you know, even downloading some of the free 3D programs like Blender from Blender.org. So if you're really trying to build a whole 3D scene, I would recommend checking those programs out because that's really going to give you all the controls and tools you need to do that. 
For most people, I think they're using Reposé or 3D Invigorator. You're really just trying to add to some 3D text, a 3D logo, that type of thing to an otherwise 2D design. So the fact that Reposé uses the th Photoshop 3D camera is great. Is it that big of a deal? I don't really think so. Be unless, again, you're building a whole 3D scene within Photoshop. But it does, so that's good. You have a number of different presets. One of the cool things about Reposé is that you can do a twirled extrusion. You can also do a bend on it. You can get kind of creative with the extrusion itself. And this is something that 3D Invigorator does not have currently. And so this is definitely kind of a cool thing within Reposé. But in this case, I'm just going to select one of the basic presets that has a bevel on the front and just a regular extrusion. And we'll get into what makes a 3D object look good, which is the materials, the textures, and the lighting. And in this area, I think Reposé falls a little bit short. You really only have five textures that you can use. And if you're just looking at the front, you really only have three textures you can use. The sides, which we'll select a red texture for. Uh, the front. And then the side, or the bevel itself, which we will give a white texture. And you'll see that you can't actually see the front texture because it's cover covered up with the bevel. So in reality, you only have two textures that you can work with. And if you have a more complex bevel, like let's grab these two little hills here. We'll see what they look like once I select it. Two little grooves. And it'd be really nice to be able to add a texture around along the inside and then have a different texture along the outside. But that's not possible because, again, you can only have one texture on the bevel. So you're just very limited on what you can use for textures on the 3D object. And that's really the important part to most 3D objects, especially text. Because they're not that complicated. You know, you're using the text as the model. And so that's taken care of. You don't really have to worry about modeling. And so it really comes down to textures. And you just don't have that many options. And you certainly have some controls for some different presets for lights, which is great. But you don't have the same control that you have in 3D Invigorator. You don't have the visual representation of the lights where you can have six different lights and play around with them. Here you've just got some presets. And you can certainly go into Photoshop and tweak the lights later. But if I'm trying to set up what my 3D text is going to look like, it'd be really nice to have all that functionality right here within Reposé without having to go back and forth between Reposé and Photoshop. But we can select one of the presets, our fire, which is going to give us some different lighting. So now we can click OK and go back out to Photoshop. And it's here that we can now start taking a look at what this looks like ray trace, which is going to be closer to what our final render is going to look like. Again, you can't do this from within Reposé. You have to go back out to Photoshop, change the quality setting to ray trace draft. And because we're not using the ray trace renderer, it's going to be a little bit slower. And this is what's going to let us see what our final version is sort of going to look like. And again, this is one of the areas that 3D Invigorator really shines, is you don't have to leave 3D Invigorator to do this type of thing. You can just hit Render Preview. It will quickly render what it's going to look like with reflections and transparency. And so the workflow for Reposé is really not the best. They're certainly, they could have more controls within the dialog box to allow you to do all the work there, as opposed to having to constantly go back and forth between Photoshop and Reposé to make changes, to render it, and so on. But it is a good tool for creating a basic 3D look out of your text or objects. But if you want to get a little bit faster workflow, something that's going to allow you to more easily create 3D objects and also allow you to add in more materials and create better looking 3D objects, you should definitely check out 3D Invigorator. It's a very powerful way of creating 3D objects as it's a full 3D environment. It's like having a mini 3D program right within Photoshop that is designed for doing text and Illustrator vector files. So definitely check it out on the digitalanarchy.com website, www.digitalanarchy.com. There's a free trial there that you can play around with. And thanks for joining me.